Consensus is a big issue because we get lots of families and everybody's got a different idea of what the perfect tree is. Get involved, it's peace of mind. It makes us feel comfortable to allow people to have a good time. She has the confidence to do her very best and she's extremely outgoing now. It's, it's our second year, we're very happy to have them here. It's an important part of our uh, holiday season as it begins. Fraser Focus, a fresh perspective beyond the bridge. Hey everyone, welcome to Fraser Focus, local faces and places here in the South Fraser and Fraser Valley region. I'm Leah Bolton. And I'm Dean Atwell on this, our special holiday episode. Coming up, we hang out with the Vancouver Giants and learn more about their relationship with Operation Christmas Child. And it's number two of our Student of the Week as well. We highlight some of those special Christmas moments. Hey, it's Christmas. <laughs> it is Christmas. It's Christmas. You guys have to get decorating. We have to get going. Have you seen growth in the fact that people are moving possibly away from fake Christmas trees and coming to try? Uh, a real Christmas tree here? It goes in cycles, you know. I think there's definitely advantages to have an everlasting Christmas tree, which is what we call our artificial ones. But often those people, after a year or two, they want that smell of that real Christmas tree again. Water it, mist it. If you're going to be going away, um, try and put it outside, turn the heat off because they will continue to drink even over the weekend and you'll come home to a dead tree. Christmas trees, why, where did they come from? How did it all start? Basically it isn't uh, either Christian or, or um, any kind of secular because pagan um, beliefs and Christian beliefs both did the same thing where they would bring green boughs into their homes uh, through the winter to try and um, get a, a connection back to what's going to grow in the spring and actually look to renewal in the spring. And evergreens were chosen because they're the only thing that's still got little leaves on them in the, the winter time. Oh, Christmas tree. Tips for coming in and picking out a tree. Well, it's kind of consensus is a big issue because we get lots of families and everybody's got a different idea of what the perfect tree is. Um, so find one that everybody likes. Try to get it level, that's what I yeah, find. If you don't get a nice, clean, level shot, then it's sticking crooked in your uh, base. There it is, Timber! Yeah, pound it! Nice work, boo! Your perfect Christmas tree called... What are we gonna call it? Frosty. Dean headed over to pick up a tree earlier. Um, and uh, now we need to know how to decorate the tree. Yeah. What I usually suggest is you pick a theme or a certain color. So like this one here, we've okay. got all reds and whites and silvers. Lots of our customers go with the typical baubles, right. which we have some. Um, but I actually, when I decorate, go away from the baubles and I, again, do some flowers and some garland and some picks more as the focal point and if just a few of the baubles to save the expense. Don't follow trends, just go with what you like. And uh, yeah, we're big fans of mixing old and new and always in home decor. Um, that's how you add personality. You don't always have to buy new. And sometimes, especially at this time of the year, it's all about tradition and history and family values. And it's nice to bring out some of those old things and it brings back the memories of when you were a child. Even just, you know, if you're not doing a full tree, you can bring in just a big branch and hang them on that. You can incorporate them into bowls of like silver bowls. Yes. Or white bowls or baskets. You know, I'm in the mirror here. We should uh, hang oh. one on my camera. And you can get and then really you're, festive. Then you're festive. Yeah, see, I like it. See, best of spirit. You're watching our holiday Christmas special. <laughs> Trying to stay out of trouble. Love those ears down there. Do you like it? We'll be right back here on Fraser Focus in a moment. Operation Red Nose is really a safe ride home service for the four weeks before Christmas as well as New Year's Eve. It's a volunteer run service to make sure people get home safely.
It started out in Quebec and uh, it just kind of caught on and went all across Canada and it's this awesome service that we do every year in the, during the holidays. If you're going to be enjoying your uh, festivities over the holidays, we want you to plan ahead for a safe ride home. Get a friend, get a taxi, use transit, or use Operation Red Nose. Operation Red Nose is really a safe ride home service uh, for the four weeks before Christmas as well as New Year's Eve. And really it's a, it's a volunteer run service to make sure people get home safely. What does Operation Red Nose mean to you, your staff and your patrons here? To all of us at the John B, I, it's a peace of mind that everyone's going to have a great time here and get home safely so there's nothing ending the night in a negative manner. Yes, we always take safe measures. Uh, we have uh, access to all the taxis and everything, but Red Nose, it's just that warmer feel as well. The people that are involved creates a comfort for people to call, and I think that means something for people. Usually three volunteers are, are, are working together as a team. One of the volunteers is a designated driver, so that's the person that drives the client in the client's vehicle. The other volunteer is the navigator. They go with the designated driver and the client in the client's vehicle, because we always want to have two volunteers uh, together right. for everybody's safety. ICBC is a, a provincial sponsor of Operation Red Nose, and we have been since it began over 20 years ago in BC. And it's a great community service in that it not only drives patrons home, but it also contributes to local charities, particularly youth. This is your first time calling the service, right? Yes, it is. First things first, you're going to have to give those keys to a volunteer. Do you have them? I do. I'm right here. Okay, here we go. There you go. Let's get going. It's awesome how many people call us for uh, to get home safely, and uh, you know, they're just people who are concerned with you know driving safely and getting home safe and not hurting anyone and hey, they get their car home at the same time so it's perfect so well, unfortunately I live in Horseshoe Bay <laughs> <laughs> this may be your only ride tonight no you don't <laughs> Well, usually um, you work with a different group of people, so you don't necessarily work with the same people every week. So you get to meet new people and talk about their lives and how they got involved and all of that sort of thing. Home sweet home. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much for all your right. donation. Good. That's My good most idea. fun pickup, the, it was a single guy and he was really happy. He wasn't overly inebriated. He was really happy and he tried to talk us into driving to Mexico. <laughs> Oh, it was pretty good, you know, I uh, wasn't planning on drinking, and I got there, and you know what it's like. Gave you lots of drinks? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, for sure, too many drinks probably, but uh, yeah. yeah. You've been involved in an accident with a drunk driver, right? Yeah, it was about 20 years ago. I was hit by a guy who had been drinking all night, basically, and my car was written off. I missed, I missed work and had to go to physiotherapy for like six months, something like that. It was just... Wow. It, I still, it's 20 years later, I still have back problems, so... Is that part of the reason why you uh, volunteer? Oh, definitely. Like, uh, I love volunteering, I love doing the work, but just knowing that I might be able to prevent an accident, you know, get somebody home safe so they don't have to go through what I went through. Oh, thanks so much. Here you go. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we just got another message from Jason. We are picking Leah up at Sammy J's. Okay. And we're taking her up to Austin and Blue Mountain. Hey, Operation Red Bull! Hi, you're Leah. <laughs> yeah, you guys gonna take me home? Yes, we are. I'm taking you home in your Joy TV car. No, oh, perfect. So the ladies are gonna drive my Joy TV car. Bill's going to follow behind, and I'm going to get home safe. We'll be right back here on Fraser Focus in a moment. Operation Red Nose. She had a nice, beautiful, clear speaking voice, so that's kind of the moment I saw her shine.
Hey guys, welcome back to Fraser Focus Local Faces and Local Places. I'm going to introduce to you our student of the week. We're profiling different youth in the community who are doing exceptional things. Are you do you Oh, you found a word. I had the pleasure of having Angel in my classroom last year, and at the beginning she was pretty shy and quiet and um, didn't have a lot of self-confidence in herself, and I think that we've gotten to a point where she has the confidence to um, just do her very best, and she's extremely outgoing now, and she, um, she even did like this passion project last year where she did a, a PowerPoint about why she wants to become a lawyer. What is a lawyer? A lawyer is who practices the law. And she, yeah, very good, nice and organized, and she had a nice, beautiful, clear speaking voice, so that's kind of the moment I saw her shine. They could hear music and see the Ferris wheel turning in the sky. They could smell the dust of the racetrack. Was it tough at first when you first started going to school here? Sometimes, like, whenever I used to do my work, I didn't know, like, what to do. Sometimes, like, my brain wasn't, like, focusing on one thing. I was just, oh my gosh, what should I do? And then later on, I, like, started learning, and then I could, like, get better at it. Did you do your platter side? No. Wayne? Nope. Okay. Right now she's helping with our morning routine. She's um, checking planners to make sure the parents have signed them and then she's checking off on a on a list and then giving the student a sticker. What sticker do you want? Pear. The mom, she always gave me coffee. She always helped me. My parents, they always said, don't be scared, always be confident. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> uh, have you seen a change in her over the years? Yeah. Yeah? Like what kind of change? She's being more confident and, and and doing things around the classroom. What advice do you have for other kids out there? It's okay to make mistakes. It's normal to make mistakes. Do you want to check on Donald over there? How I met Angel is that I was having a little problem. Was it? Yeah. I, I can't, I can't, um, I was having a little problem and then she helped me out and then I started to help her and, then we, and that's how we fast went to kindergarten. Well, there you have it, Student of the Week. We'll be back with another youth in your community next week. In the meantime, stay with us here on Fraser Focus. We're heading over to another story. Tis the season of giving, and here in Langley, the Vancouver Giants have teamed up with Operation Christmas Child to help kids across the globe. Operation Christmas Child is an organization that started in 1993, and what it does is they collect shoe boxes and they fill them with things for kids, like um, hygiene products, with educational tools, with something special like toys. For, for kids that are um, you know, going through a tough time, you know, something like uh, war or poverty, um, famine, um, I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty tough. And, and uh, you know, it's something that where we can bring joy in, into their lives. Uh, well, my daughter's playing hockey and we heard that they're doing a great cause here, donating some gifts, and so we wanted to bring some stuff down. Now, as a father, what does it mean to you to help all these children across the globe that maybe don't have a Christmas? Yeah, we're, uh, we're pretty lucky here in Canada, so when people, when we can share and give things away, and it's, it's a good learning experience for her to give away things. It's their second year. We're very happy to have them here. It's an important part of our uh, holiday season as it begins, and we had a great response from our fans. Uh, the uh, people out here at the Langley Event Center, the, the uh, staff, the fans, the, uh, the players, we all thought it was a great idea, and we had a lot of fun with it. What are people donating? Um, well, it looks like we got some plush froggies. Froggies? Okay, some frogs. Frogs are always good. What else? Um, I don't know what's in here. It's a mystery okay. box. It could yeah. be anything. Yeah. It could even be a box. Uh-huh. Two more mystery boxes. Those are some big bags there. What, what are in those bags? Oh, there's some uh, uh, light-up uh, wristbands. There's some knapsacks. There's some sunglasses, stuffies, Life of Pets stuffies. May I ask what you donated there? Um, just some toothbrushes, some pencil crayons, some crayons, and some paper. And how important is it for you to participate in stuff like this, especially at your Vancouver Giants? I have been doing this now for the last five years, so it's important to me that somebody gets Christmas somewhere in the world. 
here at the Giants, we, we do a lot of charity work and things like that. And uh, you know, it, it uh, you know, it puts a smile on my face, uh, trying to put smiles on uh, on others. And um, I think it's a, a great you know, organization here, and, and uh, you know, I'm very thankful to be a part of it. Where, where are we going right now? We're right downstairs to get ready for the puck. Uh, draw, ceremonial puck draw. We need to give back in our community. That's something that uh, I've been very fortunate to work with this team since uh, inception. Uh, 17 years and our ownership group has always been about community and about giving back and uh, we like to carry that on. It's, it's really what difference can our business make and, and our hockey team make in the community uh, that's really important to them. Yeah, what about for the box? Yeah. All right. is, this, is this the kind of stuff that you would like to see for Christmas as well? Probably. A lot of these toys I would like be overjoyed to have at Christmas time. Last year, Operation Christmas Child distributed over 650,000 boxes to kids across the globe. Right there, kiddos. You're watching Fraser Focus. More local stories when we come back. Do you want to put mine over there as well? Oh, boxy over here. In life, sharing is the most important thing, although we don't do it. Not everybody, anyway. In the onesies. I think I might actually wear this. Well, I'm glad. Perfect. It's pretty comfortable. I don't think you're supposed to wear jeans under it, but uh, no, we'll let you get, a, get away with <laughs> it. <laughs> According to a 2011 survey, about 92% of Canadians celebrate a form of Christmas. I'm in my onesie. Gonna give away some gifts of joy. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'm gonna sit right with you. I think I have something for you. What do you think of that? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, do you cook? Oh, oh, does she ever? Okay, I got the right hey, thing I'm for famous. you. <laughs> Olive oils. We've got some fantastic onesies, as you can see I'm sporting right now from Lazy One. We've got some chocolates, some stuffies, some microphones, some nice oils. Uh, I mean, it's a great day today. Let's give some stuff away. You guys look like you might need a prize. Oh, he's very good at this. <laughs> He's, he's making me talk oh, yeah, into the microphone. Yeah. And you talk? And I talk? Hey, How about so you go get fun. your hair done at Michaud's? Have you been there? No, I haven't, but I've heard about it. You go pick your tree out at Arts Nursery, mm -hmm. and you don't have to pay for it. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Joy TV. See? Oh. Compliments. Well, yeah. thank you. Us. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it, guys. We gave away all of the gifts. We're going to be back next year in your community to give away some more. Kim's Angels is just, just a great group of people that have a passion to make a difference and, 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 and they want to see people's lives changed in, uh, in, in very basic ways, but you know what, it's, it's the basics that sometimes make the biggest difference. Um, you give them to Sabrina, they go right to the front. And by the yes, by the table, yes. This is Kim. We're royal here. We are. She's what you call a good egg. Okay, Charlie. <laughs> no cracks, okay. Okay. Um, this is a nice place for me because uh, I, I'm basically a hermit at home and I come here because I can give and I can learn. I learn a lot here. This is a, basically a drop in that we've been doing pretty much for the last 25 years in some way uh -huh. um, within the Langley community here. And uh, we have a, a food place where people can come in and get some food, cup of coffee. If they've been, uh, if they're homeless and on the streets, they come in, get, they get warm for a little while. Over here on this side, in, in uh, this section, uh, mm -hmm. we have what we call our free store. Okay. And basically they're really good quality used clothing that uh, people donate. So you'll see how everybody is helping and right. then all the stuff goes here mm -hmm. and the people that are here, they will take six things. Hanging these things up. Well, but Do I have to choose which section it goes oh, into? Yes, of okay. course. Okay. Yeah, the baby on this side. Baby's on that side. Girl, boy. And then this one's definitely a baby. That's Santa's baby. helper, yeah. that's yeah. so cute. Okay. goes 
to the community and it doesn't just go in a bank account and it go somewhere and uh, pay so a it bunch. comes direct is what you're yeah, saying yeah. so most of the people that come in here they had a they may have a roof over their heads some of them but yeah. aside from that there's not uh, much I'm, else. I'm just low income uh, I have a roof over my head yeah and it's about getting to that next step isn't it it's about yeah. finding it's about yeah. living day to day sharing is the most important thing so not only are you coming in here to take, you're sharing what you've got and what you don't need perhaps and giving back. In life, it's sharing that's the most important thing, although we don't do it. Not everybody, anyways. It's a place to hang out. You meet people up the street, they meet you, you talk, you uh, exchange. The best thing anybody can do here is listen. I fell asleep because I used to work so much and I just phew, passed out and woke up in a coma. No, I woke up from a coma because it's hard to wake up in a coma. And they, have, they do have a right to because there's, uh, you know, bad officers in the crowd that will, you know, murder for the rest of us. And the criminal stuff, they, they think I'm not going to criminal. It's like, because you're homeless. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm going to cry. Um, she got me into affordable housing. Of all places, not just a place. She got me a home. And <laughs> I can't thank her enough. My son can't thank her enough. We're wishing everyone in the South Fraser and Fraser Valley region a happy holiday. It's certainly been a pleasure bringing you local stories from the Fraser region this past year, and we're looking forward to 2018. If you guys have a story to tell, don't forget to contact us. You can give us a call, send us an email, or there's always social media, Joy TV BC. I'm Leah Bolton. And I'm Dean Atwell, wishing you a Merry Christmas and... A Happy New Year. We'll see you next week.